All right, hello everybody. Test time is tomorrow, so time for a quick review. Hopefully you guys have shot through this thing and can be a little bit, and I wanna go through some of the answers. Uh, to figure out the elevation of these points, the hard part, I guess X and Y are pretty easy because they're labeled. So X is at 3,500, Y is at 3,000. Maybe the harder part over here is figuring out what the contour interval is. Uh, you'd have to know what each one of these lines is worth. And I should have had that as a question on here. What's the contour interval, right? Um, so you got to like count, you got to think about it. And if we go from 3,000 to 3,500, you know, you can even guess and then try to see if that's the right one. So maybe you say it's 10, so then you'd say 3,010, 3,020, 3,030, 3,040. Uh-oh, that didn't work. Uh, so the real answer here is that we go by hundreds. So A would be at 3,000, 100, 200, 300, 400. A would be at 3,400. And B looks like it's at 2,900. And again, X and Y were previously labeled. Uh, how far apart are X and Y? This, again, when you're when you're doing this on paper, this is a heck of a lot easier. You can kind of like hold a little piece of paper up and, and figure it out. Um, or you can just roughly estimate. What do you want to call it? About two miles? Let's say it's about two miles. If you were off on that a little bit, um, that's not going to be super important this year because of everything that's going on. Uh, so calculating a gradient is going to use those two answers, those two miles. This is where I will probably draw a little bit. Um, so the gradient between X and Y. Um, so remember, that's like doing a slope. We need to know how much are we going up and downhill? Question mark. Divided by how much are we going distance-wise? All right, this is going to be on the test. No, no two ways about it. So we went up and down by 500 feet because we went from 3,000 to 3,500 or down 500, doesn't really matter. The change in elevation was 500 feet. Divided by the distance, how far apart are they? Again, we estimated that at about two miles. It might be off by a little bit. If you got out a piece of paper and you were accurate with that, it might be better. But again, this year, I'll figure out a way to make that distance thing nice and easy and fair. So don't panic on that more panic about the procedure. How do we actually do this? Um, and that's it right there. So that slope would be that you go down every 500 feet for every two miles, you just grab a calculator and divide, and that comes out to 250 feet per mile. And if you got a slightly different mileage, then uh, that's gonna be different by a bit. But again, I'll make the distance thing easy. As long as you know to do this like a slope problem, do it like a gradient problem. Okay, uh, next, I'd say that this creek is flowing generally south, and we could say a couple of things. One, water flows downhill, that makes that easy. Sometimes the Regents is going to um, instead make you do it without numbers on there, in which case you can literally say the Vs. That's a, that's a legal Regents answer. The Vs, like that, point upstream. And what I mean by that is that the contour lines make this V mark, this notch, that points upstream, that points uphill, and water flows downhill. All right, that will be on the test, I promise. How do you know where the hill is the steepest? I'd say it's generally over there, uh, which you should know because the lines are close together. The closer the lines are, the faster you're changing elevation, the faster your, your gradient is higher. If you're going downhill, like more downhill over a shorter distance over here where the lines close together whereas over here it's flat so yeah that's that all right over to this guy um try what you think a profile would look like now i threw this on there it's not easy um and again there's a whole procedure for doing these profiles i had you guys do it on the computer with that website this year and uh, you know that was cool but what you would normally do is this whole thing with taking a piece of paper putting it on the sheet from A to B, making all these little tiny marks. We do like multiple labs on this. You guys got out of a lot of work this year. So if you hate this, think of how much more you'd hate it later. Um, but what I would say, I guess that if we wanted to be somewhat accurate, we could say that A is at about 310. So I'm gonna put a dot right about there. And B is also at 310. So I'm gonna put a dot right about there. And again, what you would do in a normal year is plot all these dots and make them very accurate. Um, it looks like it goes down a little bit below 250. So I'm saying that the river 
is maybe down here somewhere. And the other thing I want to do is that these lines are closer together. So I think it's a faster dip on this side, down a little bit below 250, and back up. Now that's not, that's me with years of experience. That's not like a wicked easy thing for a rookie to just look at that and be able to see that. And if you just kind of did like a general, like, well, it's kind of like that, then I think you're, you're probably in really good shape. Um, but I wanted to throw one on there just to see like, okay, profiles. I'd say on the test, you're more likely to have ones like we're on the lab where here's a line, which profile matches that line. Um, another gradient. So yeah, let's do it. Um, so the options are, there's always two ways, you know, a couple ways to do things. I'd say D is at 230 and C is at 310. So that's a difference of 80, right? Or sometimes you count and just go, I'm going by 10, say 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80. Both end up being that we've gone up and downhill uh, with a difference of 80. Oop, this map says meters. I almost said feet, but it tells us that we're dealing with meters here. <clears throat> Over the distance between them. And again, normal year, this 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 part won't be something that I make you fight through, especially since if you touch the screens, so many things happen. But I'm thinking so that's about four kilometers. Divide 80 into four pieces, and you get a gradient of 20 meters per kilometer. That's another gradient, another slope. That's how those go. Okay. Um, again, the other part of this test is going to be density, and uh, you got to learn to fight through these things. you got to be able to do a little bit of algebra to fight through these things. Um, I think this video is going to get pretty long. Where are we at right now? I'm already at seven minutes. This is going to get pretty long if I do every single one of these, but... We should maybe at least do uh, one of each type. So let's do. Let's start with the easiest. If I need to find out the density, it's mass over volume. So this one right here is the easiest type of problem you can get. You take your mass, you divide it by your volume, and you get yourself an answer. So four six eight point two over four five one point four. That's one point oh three seven. So let's do one point. Oh, four. That would round to. And the density is grams over milliliters because you did it that way. Grams over milliliters. All right. So the other two might be a little bit trickier. You got to be able to do a little bit of algebra, which I know you can from, from math. So it's still, it's going to be this equation every time. You're going to be given it every time. You do not have to memorize this equation. It'll be right on the test. So what do we do? Just plug in the numbers like you got them. Let's do uh, let's do the top one. So density is 2.73. So I'm going to plug them in just like this. That's 2.73. And density still equals mass over volume. I've got a mass of 228 over I don't know. So in math class they always use x, right? You can use x, you can use v, you can use J doesn't matter, right? I think people, for some reason, it just clicks into being more comfortable when you write X. That's it. If you did that, then all you got to do is cross multiply to solve. Let's do that and solve. So 228 equals, that's a heck of an equal sign right there, equals 2.73X. Your math teacher is better at using the software than I am. Oh, oh! Hopefully, your math teacher is also better at math. Two point seven three x. That's my bad. Then divide by two point seven three. That's what should be in that mess. Divide by two point seven three. Two twenty eight divided by two point seven three. 
And in this case, that would be milliliters. There is a decimal in there. All right, let's do one more. Um, then these ones, it's all kind of the same method. And maybe, maybe you and I should talk individually if we're still struggling on these down here. You should know, by the way, for that one, that the density of water is one. That's a rule. All right, if density equals mass over volume on this one, uh, this one right here, 4.6 equals mass over volume. I don't know what the mass is. That's what I'm looking for here. Over a volume of 201.1. And again, any number can always go over one because something divided by one is always itself. So now X, if you cross multiply, one X or just X equals, and this is just going to be your answer here, 4.6 times 201.1. Looks like 925.06. Yeah. All right. You want to do one uh, trick? This isn't for everybody. Some people like it. Some people don't. It's called a DMV triangle. If I start talking about this and you're like, wait a minute, I'm getting more confused. Just ignore it. Don't do it. This is this equation just hiding. Now, I'm not going to give you this. This is only if like you can memorize this and this makes 100% sense to you. If, if this is confusing, skip it. But what this would be is that density equals mass over volume or volume equals mass over density or mass, since these two are next to each other, equals density times volume. So if you can memorize that and that like pictorial format makes sense to you, then that's, uh, that's a little cheat. Your call, whatever works for you. If it's more dense, it sinks. If it's less dense, it floats. So when I put ice in those two different liquids, they were two different liquids. That was the key to that thing. One was water and one was rubbing alcohol, which you guys actually measured to be lower, less dense, right? So the one it floated in was because the liquid was more dense. I'm not going to write dense. Look at that handwriting. Um, since the liquid is more dense, the ice floats to the top. The one it sank in is because the liquid was less dense. Rubbing alcohol, so just <laughs> sit straight to the bottom. All right. I'm not saying you shouldn't do these. You should. I'm saying that I don't want to drag this video out longer than I already have. How painful are we? Oh, 12 minutes, 13 minutes. Thanks for sticking with me. Uh, good luck on the test, and let's chat if you need help on these guys, because they will be there tomorrow. I promise. So long for a while.